Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Simonton. I'm the managing editor of IMDb. <laughs> and today we have the honor of honoring the 40th anniversary of what is arguably uh, the greatest horror film of all time, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and its co-writer and director, Toby Hooper. Thank you. Thank you, we, thank you. We don't need to do a filmography, but I'll do a quick one. Uh, Mr. Hooper was born January 25th, 1943 in Austin, Texas. He um, directed in addition to Texas Chainsaw. Uh, we'll just do a snippet of his uh, filmography. Um, Eaten Alive, the TV version of Salem's Lot. <laughs> Poltergeist. <laughs> Life Force, personal favorite of mine. And Invaders from Mars. Uh, and, your, and his most recent film was Jin. Um, so I, I also want to mention, by the way, that there is a, a 4K restoration of the film that is playing in Director's Fortnite. Yes, yes, yes. P p playing tonight. Playing tonight at 10 o'clock. And, and, and surround sound, serious sound, and, and a beautiful restoration. Dolby 7.1, I believe, in that, in that auditorium. Yeah. And uh, then sa Saturday at 10.30 at Studio 13. So uh, please be sure to catch that. By the way, um, introducing him tonight will be Nicholas Vinding Reffin. And I had the opportunity to talk with Mr. Reffin a few days ago. Um, and he considers uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think rightly, to be one of the five timeless films of all time. So uh, we'll get into it. Um, one thing that has really always curi uh, been curious to me is um, you were uh, in. Co you were teaching. You were a college professor of of, of sorts. What subjects were you teaching? <laughs> well, well, well. It, no, it film basically. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I started as a film student, and and and, uh, and I uh, was the only one only one student at uh, uh, at RTF at, at UT. And, and and that was at the time the home for uh, um, the uh, oh, uh, uh, PBS. Oh. And 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 so the uh, uh, the the founder of PBS was fond of me, uh, and and I started using their film to go out and record things happening on campus and around uh, uh, the university, and uh, and and. Uh, and, and my teacher quit. And so I took his job. And what that meant was I got more film, more cameras, <laughs> more, and, and I just started shooting. And, and so I was teaching myself, but, but I already knew how to do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, I started, I started quite young. If I can delve into that a little bit, and can everyone hear? Okay. Um, if I can delve into that a little bit, uh, w w on on when teaching film, wh who were some directors you you covered, or did was that part of it, or just shooting, just just, just, me. just making film, just making film. Wow, it was wow. learning to do. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, I, I could s s sit in my office and talk to myself, <laughs> but there was no one else <laughs> around. Um, <laughs> I did not know this until I, until I got to camp. Um, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre was uh, in the director's fortnight uh, here in 1975. And there's a pretty fascinating story about the uh, original screening of Texas Chainsaw here in Cannes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it had it, 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 uh, it, it shown around in the States and, it, and, and this this energy followed the film, I, actually. I mean, it was uh, shown, I, I think, before in, um, s a sneak preview in San Francisco uh, to the, uh, uh, with taking a Pelham 123 because their, tra their, their underground had just been completed. And, and the city council in San Francisco went, went to see this, uh, uh, taking a Pelham and it had a sneak preview and it was chainsaw. And it, anyway, <laughs> f f it fights exploded. Uh, city council people started th throwing up. <laughs> and 
that caused more <laughs> fights. And then, uh, you know, the people that loved it and the people that were enraged by it. Uh, and, and, uh, and, the, uh, and, and all of this started growing. I mean, this kind of thing happened in several cities. Uh, uh, and Rex, Rex Reed um, saw it on 42nd Street, a, a famous critic. Uh, and he, and he t was with a, his friends, and, uh, and his friend's wife was pregnant, and she, st she went into labor. <laughs> and, and he gave it this great review that, that sent it straight to, to, to Cannes and, and in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, and, um, and, and so I got here, and, um, and, 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 and the cinema, it was like um, a, a, an older cinema, but it had a, a glass front, like, like thick glass, and people were pressing in to, to get in, to make sure they were going to get in. And, and a friend came here with me, and, and he, was, um, he was pressed against the glass, and he would begin to look like a, a cartoon. I mean, the doors were locked. I mean, it was, you know, becoming that, that image of, you know, a suction cup nose and mouth, you know, stuck to the glass. And he started fighting, and then the fighting ripples through. And then finally they opened the doors, and the, and the people poured in. And, and everyone sat down, and, uh, uh, and I was called over by um, uh, so someone in the King's Inn said, come, I have to tell you something. And, and he said, uh, someone just called and said there's a bomb in, in, in the theater. And so, so I, 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 I don't know where I got this, you know, be, being a director, where I got this, down, I'll, I'll be the last one to go down with this ship, you know. But I got on stage and I said, you know, that, that the theater has to be clear, that, uh, you know, that there was a, a bomb threat called in. And, um, and so they cleared the theater, and, um, and, in, and people had uh, drinks and hospitality and uh, waiting for them. But it left one or two empty, you know, empty seats. Uh, and um, at that point, someone else came in. Now, I, I, I was out on a, um, out on a boat with um, uh, these uh, people I will not name. And, and, and someone told me uh, that they called the, the bomb threat in so they could get a seat. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, thank God it wasn't, you know, for real. <laughs> um, Toby, I want to talk about the development of uh, the characters, particularly Franklin and Leatherface, who I think are probably two of the most complex, uh, intriguing characters in a horror film. Un, uh, uh, unexpected, surprising. Um, when you and your co-writer, Kim Henkel, could you talk about developing Franklin, particularly? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, Franklin, uh, I, at first I wanted to, him to be played by, and he was inspired by this famous Texas artist that, uh, that, 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 that came up with the, the armadillo motif, and then, uh, you know, and then... Uh, Jim, Jim Franklin. Jim Franklin. And, um, and so, you know, I wanted it to be him, and I wanted to put him in, in a wheelchair to make his, his problems, his backstory, more complex. Uh, you, you, you know, he's, he's whining about everything because he always, he has such a, you know, low opinion of himself that what he does is he grosses people out. And um, so that was the start of it, and then it just started uh, developing from there, like uh, he he was the one that had knowledge of, of head cheese, and um, um, that it w that was the working title of the film. Actually, it was he head cheese. Uh, I'd seen some in a, one night at a supermarket shopping, and it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> you know, and 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 um, but um, but it, but but anyway, he, he's um, he's very uncomfortable with his sister. Uh, Sally, and 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 he just messes with her head all the time, and and she has her own problems and she's sick of him, and and their family their family dynamics in it in their own way 
uh, it was almost as serious as the family that they're intruding on. Hmm. Uh, uh, but I, I mean, the kind of people that at uh, holiday dinners and such, such as that would, uh, you know, end up fighting, and 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 in, in a rugged way, you know, a, a ragged way, I guess I should say. So, it was important for me to to to, to have these backstories so that you, you're not just you know coming into a film that is a, 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 a film of a, about pe people being led to slaughter. Right. I, I, I mean, th these these dynamics were very important to like her survival, uh, uh, Sally, and um, and I'll jump cut to Leatherface. Um, I have, um, I had uh, relatives in Wisconsin, and, and and when I was like five years old, I'd, I'd heard about this, uh, this 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 man that had been put in the uh, a mental institution. That when, when they broke into his house, the the authorities they they found uh, uh, um, human skin, the lampshades, you know. And, Furniture covered in human skin, and and I, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know the full story, uh, uh, but they told me these things just you know, that really really freaked me out deeply. Uh, later, I found that, like I think four years after I made the film, I found out that the film was based on him. <clears throat> so to the infamous Ed Gein. The infamous Ed Gein. So, so in, in spirit, you know, there is a connection. Uh, but Leatherface uh, ca came from uh, the family doctor that would always sew me up. You, you know, you know, I mean, I was constantly being hit in the head or a sign would fall, <laughs> and I mean, but this, uh, but someone hit me in, in the head with a golf club, and 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 in those way, in, in those days, instead of. Um, X-raying you to find out if you had a um, a fracture, they would anesthetize the um, yeah. ar around the wound, and then s put rubber gloves on and stick their finger between your scalp and your skull, and feel if there's a hole there. <laughs> and, and 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 as he's doing this, <clears throat> he told me that when he was in pre-med school, <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> That he had, uh, uh, that he skinned a cadaver's face, uh, and um, and 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 head, and 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 dried it and um, and cured it, and wore it to the uh, Halloween ball, Halloween uh, the Halloween party, and so that of course had you know burned another hole <laughs> in, in, in my brain, and so so when all of this stuff came to me, it came to me rushing. At one time, if I may, um, uh, how old were you when you got hit in the head of the golf club? I think I, I was I was probably oh, twelve, something like that, <laughs> ten or twelve. I was always you know like even <laughs> riding a tricycle, you know, and a uh, you know up up a paved uh, driveway, you know, and too you know too too steep to chug a tricycle up and fall over backward and you know get a nut. <laughs> now, I, this all coalesced in a Montgomery Ward when... It, it was. It, it was a Montgomery Ward uh, department store in the uh, holiday season. And I, uh, because of my family dynamics, I hated, I, I, I hated the pressure put on me that I felt from, uh, you know, the family get-together and, uh, and uh, 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 you know, dinner and, and, all, and all of that. Uh, and um, and I just wanted to get the hell out of of, of uh, M Montgomery Ward and the mall, and 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 I was looking at this wall of people. I mean, it, it seemed like it was imp like a total wall that was moving very slowly. <coughs> and I thought, oh, geez, you know, I have to I have to. It's going it'll take me 15 minutes to get out of this damn place. And um, I was looking down and and uh, thinking about it and like like you know like oh man shit and uh, and and my focus rack to um, a, a display of chainsaws in front of me 
And, and it, you know, I mean, it, no brainer, I thought, you know, I, mean, I know how I can get out of this place fast. And if there's gas in the thing, well, I mean, I, but I didn't do it. <laughs> I so, mean, no, I knew I would end up in jail, you know. And I, so, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was partially inspired by Christmas shopping. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it became uh, my gift. But, but because by the time, the, the, these, these particles of things that I, I'd been working on about, uh, uh, we, we had a gasoline crisis and, 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 and cars would queue up for um, two miles, you know, to get 10 gallons of rationed gas. And, and, um, and, and, and there were a, you know, a, a lot of things going on where, you know, the, the Watergate, uh, um, the end of Vietnam, and, uh, and, and these things had been, I, I don't know, they were churning in my head, but anyway, that, that, uh, that chainsaw experience sparked something, and I got, I got in a car and uh, started thinking about this loop of escape. You know, how Sally, no matter how hard she tries to escape, that she's, this ex I mean, women are, the, the stronger of the species. And, uh, and so I, I knew that she could, would have the energy to try to escape a situation that she would always loop back around, you know, into the, in, into the spider's web. Um, and, um, and, and, but that, you know, she would survive. And, uh, and then, and then, then the, that, that whole sequence of events came to me in a, like, like a, a couple of seconds. So the story of the film happened over a matter of seconds and I got, and I got home and, 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 and put on uh, Elton John's uh, Yellow Brick Road and started listening to it and there's some darkness in it. And uh, even though it sounds, you know, to, to the contrary. Uh, and, and within, you know, with, with it, Within a very short period of time, I, I'm talking about less than an hour, the story came to me. Um, you know, from the beginning to the end. And that is a gift. That, that is that that was my gift. That was a, certainly can we, a gift. Can we talk about the old man now? The old man, and correct me if I'm wrong, has always been, I, and I certainly uh, had always long assumed that he was the father. The son of the, the gr of uh, grandpa and the father of Lever Leatherface and the hitchhiker because he did the corporal punishment route. Yes, yes. But as I understand it, he was actually one of, he was the oldest brother. He, he was the oldest brother. So uh, if he's the oldest brother, what happened to the intermediate mother and father of, of, the, of the, that, those three wonderful siblings? Well, I don't know what happened to the father. I expect he... Uh, uh, w worked at the, you know, w worked at the slaughterhouse as, as well and uh, was, you know, m most likely buried out back somewhere. Uh, the mother is upstairs with old grandpa. That's the mother? That's, that's the mother. I always thought that was grandma. I'll be darned. And, and, and so, so Jim Cito, who, who was a sh great Shakespearean actor. Uh, yeah, Jim, yeah. And and the uh, old man. yeah, and and, uh, and and so you know Jim was the older brother, and 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 he, you know he, he had a real conflict, you, you know, because Grandpa was was the best killer at the slaughterhouse. Best killer of all. Uh, and and um, and, uh, and and s but but Jim, Jim's character, had a real conflict over this business of, uh, you see, uh, he, as he says at the dinner table, he says, I, 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 I take no pride in killing. Yeah. And, uh, but, th but then again, he uh, would swing back to the other side during some, you know, real nasty business and, and kind of get s sexually excited. Uh, and then, and then look to, you know, look, look to old grandpa and, 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 and he would try to calm down or he would you know skits back and forth between these personalities um, he um, uh, you know even tried to to 
So to make it all right with himself, when Sally is, uh, they're, they're, they're going to try to knock her head off, um, he, you know, he turns to her and he is, is uh, being complimentary of old grandpa as the best killer that, that won't hurt a bit. And in and, and his way, he's, he's, he's trying to give her a gift. Uh, you know, he's trying to tell her that uh, it, um, it's, it's okay and you, you should like this experience. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what's going on in his head. And he also warns them originally, don't go up to that house. He told them, yeah, don't, don't go there. Yeah. What would you do that, that for? Uh, he said, uh, yeah, he said uh, something like, uh, them things are dangerous. And, uh, and, um, but he's talking about Franklin's family's grandmother's house that, uh, you know, was close by to, right. to their house. And, um, he says something very specific at that point. He says, uh, when he's talking about grandpa, that the, if the hook and chain gang could have gotten those thieves out of the oh, way, oh, oh, yeah. he could have killed more. That's very specific jargon. Where, where did you find that? Was that, I was trying to th think of, of, Okay, I wanted him to express that he was the best killer, uh, and and then I and and then I I had to solve the problem without really having personal experience of the slaughterhouse. Uh, you know what what would they do? Uh, they would move the move the uh, the beeves uh, out of the way, and uh, and I don't know if I don't know if this is a, a Real terminology, but I came up with okay. Someone has to have a hook and grab to to get them out of the way quickly, and 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 I, I call it the the hook, hook and chain yeah, uh, yeah. gang or what? what. And, and I, I don't know. It was invented. Can we talk about um, the original tableau of the in the graveyard that the hitchhiker I believe constructs? He's 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 uh, he's the artist. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. He impales. Uh, yeah, he digs that stuff up, and it, and and it always it makes the older brother mad when there's been another grave robbery or, 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 or he brings dead cats into the house and plays with them. You know, and and uh, was was that particular tableau the man <laughs> sitting impaled in, impaled with the other head chewing on a bone? Was there any particular meaning to that? Did you have any inspiration for that, or? Uh, well, it looked good. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it did. I thought, you know, that was the way to do it, and, it, and of course, you know, I mean, there is a bit of uh, a bizarreness, and uh, you know, being in, uh, having an obelisk, you know, up the butt through the back of the head of of a corpse, and uh, and and. And, and wire from coat hangers tying all of this stuff together. And, uh, and uh, you know, he was a, he was a, uh, the hitchhiker was uh, quite a, a naughty boy. And, um, but he was a bit, of, he was a bit of an artist. That's wonderful. Now, now, now Leatherface, by the way, is uh, like Baby Huey. And, um, and, and most of what he's doing, he's doing out of fear. A after, after he kills uh, Jerry, that, you know, af after Pam on the meat hook, after um, uh, uh, Kurt, Kurt, that intrudes into his house and he's protecting, you know, he's, he's alone and he's protecting his, his property. Or I mean, he's protecting their, their, little, uh, their little homestead that he does have pride in. Even though he's accused later of not having any pride in his home. Well, look what he did to the door. And and but by the time the th uh, the third person, the in intruder comes in and he whacks him in the head with a hammer, he, he totally freaks out and you know ru runs to the front window and brushes by the, that that ch uh, chicken and the bird their bird cage their pet. Um, he's totally freaked out looking out the window. And he's wondering when in the is someone else going to come up? <laughs> because I hope not. Because I'm in enough trouble as it uh, as it is. I'm I'm my ass is in real trouble, and his his poor mind is he's 
he's, ter he's terrified of what's going to happen to him when everyone gets home that night. It's another humanizing moment of, of the character, which is, you know, oh my God, where are these people coming from? And I have to keep killing them. Uh, 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 Poor yeah, guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get, I'm, I'm, I'm already deeper in trouble than I have ever been. Did he ever have a name before Leatherface? No. No, 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 he didn't. No, Leatherface and, and the finger in the, under the skull, you know, from the, the doctor. I mean, that's the only thing I could call it because, you know, it turns into leather and it's, uh, you know, perfectly thematic with the slaughterhouse and the skins and the... And he speaks gibberish, but you originally had um, dialogue for him. Um, I don't... That I think you and think Gunnar Hansen, you kind of decided, no, well, I, well let's get yeah, rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you recall what any of that... No, no, I don't, no. But, but whatever it was, you know, it, 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 it would have de demystified him. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you... I, I mean, the hitchhiker is making these skinned faces. I mean, they're l face lampshades hanging over the dinner table. W w w one, of, one, of, uh, one of them is uh, one of the major backers in the film. Uh, I, 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 not, not, not his real skin, but <laughs> it, you know. I, I had a death mask made of him, and you know, it's a latex thing. Is that the one where it's shot through, where you can see the two eye holes? That's your... Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and no, 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 it's just hanging there o over, over the arm armadillo or the dead chicken and the, the thing that is still love. And the, the those things are you know, like, the, like now that wasn't the same chicken that was the pet chicken. Right. Uh, that chicken was treated very well because uh, uh, that was what a last minute thought was, you know, to give for me to say, you know, they need a pet. So, you know, a, ch a chicken in a bird cage proportionately would be so screwed looking that, uh, you know, I would like to see that. And I told Bob Burns, the, my uh, production designer, I said, you know, go out and find the mangiest chicken. And I use that word, and I don't know if that applies to chickens, but. Uh, oh, yeah, but, but, again. But, but I said, that, you know, the worst creature you can find. No. I, I realized that Bob thought, I mean, later I realized that Bob probably uh, interpreted that as Bob go out and find a chicken and pull feathers out of him and, and, and put, uh, you know, uh, latex sores on him. Now, I say that. I say that he... Uh, he 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 took his reaction that far because he threatened to have me arrested, or to you know to turn me into uh, the SPCA. And I, I said, I'm I'm just talking about you know, okay, if, um, you know find find a ch if you find a chicken that's lost feathers, and and he just he he flipped out. Well, I mean, it was hot in the house, and all of that stuff was still curing too. Like like, like it was human bones. Uh, and, and because uh, it, they were less expensive to buy human skeletons than, uh, than uh, uh, you know, plastics, uh, you, you know, for medical school use. And, um, and that the film, that reversal stock, was like uh, ASA 40. That means you need a hundred times more light right. than you do now. So, so that stuff was still cooking, and there was a light inside that skeleton totem, and um, and and then also um, I thought, well, you know, the hitchhiker is dragging in d uh, roadkill, and um, and um, and and so I don't know who ordered this up. I mean, I suggested this, and then things would happen, but. Uh, it had been a you know, it had been a, a dark day at the city pound, you know. It was that day. Oh yeah. And a dump <coughs> truck full of um, uh, uh, dead, dead. Yeah. And and and, and uh, you know they, they brought them out and emptied about oh, uh, thirty yards uh, uh, from the house or uh, maybe a little farther a, a, a mountain. Of, d of dead animals that was uh, something that was just so 
you know, terrible to, to, to see. And they're like, what am I going to do with him? Uh, uh, make up Dorothy Pearl um, tried injecting formaldehyde and, 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 and they were working on this and, you know, and I would come see what was going on. I saw that and, and she had injected uh, formaldehyde in a dead dog's leg and, um, um, and it went through it and she shot herself uh, and, um, and she said, this isn't working. I said, my God, this, this won't work and you know, th this can't work. Uh, get rid of these things, you know, have someone, and I, I uh, t talked to Ron Bozeman, who was my production manager, who, who was, you know, R Ron Bozeman of mm -hmm. uh, one of the producers, Blader of Silence of the Lamb, um, and, um, and he said, okay, I'll have someone get rid of them. Well, now, th now this wasn't Ron's fault, I, d I don't know who did this, but someone poured five gallons of gasoline on a mountain of say, uh, I don't know, uh, eight or 900 pounds. Wow. Thinking that, you know, five gallons of gasoline is going to make this disappear, like, like in the movies. Y you know, so, and, 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 and this whole movie was uh, actually counter to that, of what was happening in movies. Yeah. And, and, you know, for instance, uh, uh, you know, who in a Hollywood movie would try to escape and jump through a plate glass window twice. I, you know, they would say, oh, you know, it's been done once, let's do it again. But, you know, but in this situation, you'd jump through it a third time or a fourth time. And I just wanted to break all those conventions. Anyway, those things caught fire and black smoke, you know, all the oil started the burning. Yeah. And, 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 and the dinner table scene took 27 hours to shoot because I was losing uh, Jim, who was a SAG actor, and I was losing, uh, Grandpa. Uh, uh, Grandpa was John. the the last, uh, um, y you know, his last uh, uh, makeup appliance. He said he wasn't going to do go through that again. If I uh, believe yeah, you yeah. said, yeah, yeah, and right. So that forced you guys to shoot that entire right. dinner scene in sweltering heat with burning carcasses outside. Burnt, but that, that, and we tinted the house because you know that that's, that dinner scene happens at night. And so we shot through the, you know, through the night and into the next day and had to tent the house and it made it even hotter and, 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 and the props were cooking as well. And, uh, and then I think it was, I think it was Dr. Barnes who, who uh, had done the, uh, who wanted to, uh, a, a plastic surgeon who wanted to experiment with uh, doing prosthetic makeup. Oh. And, uh, but I, I, I think he came out with the drama me because at the end of, uh, or whatever it was to help nausea, uh, because at the end of, uh, at the end of a cut, everyone would run to the window and, you know, and empty the, the but, but because Pearl. of, you know. <laughs> and now, and you I, I, I think I've grossed everyone out. <laughs> I must and have, but it was. Actually, I'm curious. Get, I had to get these shots, you know, <laughs> or, or this was at the end of the movie. And you rented this house. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Rent, rented this house from an old hippie. And how was the old hippie when he uh, saw what was going on in his house? Well, he was renting the house. <laughs> and he didn't care. Uh, and, um, and. and it, you, yeah, we got there and um, <coughs> and and uh, there was only one uh, one one side, uh, two sides of the house I could shoot from, because I got there you know and discovered that uh, that uh, th this old guy had uh, about an acre of uh, marijuana uh, uh, plants that are about twelve feet tall, uh, you know, catacorn, you know, but but, but behind. Uh, the house, and and uh, <laughs> there was an investor that was a, a a state politician that came out. I mean, I didn't know about this for the longest time, you know, and and uh, but because I just I, I, I was too busy making my movie and thinking about how. And, and anyway, he, he he came out and he looked at that and he said, "Oh, thank God," he said, "My." My life is flashing before my <laughs> eyes, and um, 
but because the, the, the cops had come out several times because we'd <laughs> laid dolly track across the road in, in front. And, and um, so I, you know, it wasn't, wasn't, my, wasn't my shit, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I was renting a house. Speaking of uh, uh, cannabis, uh, there's a uh, story, I don't know if it's apocryphal or not, that John Larroquette, who does the uh, uh, Orson the Welles Orson like Welles. intonation of the voiceover? Yeah. Um, that he was paid off in an unusual way. That he was. I don't know. I heard I don't that know. he was paid off with a, um, with a what would be now illegal in um, Washington State in Colorado. Right, right, <laughs> right. Um, well. This was in post-production. This was after the film was cut, and 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 I was uh, recording the um, uh, the um, do doing a lot of the the recording at Todd A.O. or I did all of the mix at Todd A.O. and a, a very famous Academy Award uh, mixer was uh, was doing the mix, and so I met John there and and in, in L.A. He. He was uh, from Colorado, I think, and uh, but 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 that's where I met him. So he was never on the set or, or anything. But um, I don't know. That could be true. There's a there's a lot of things that could be true. Like <laughs> I, I I find that like uh, Gunner actually cuts Marilyn's finger uh, be, be, be because the 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 blood tube wouldn't work, and 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 I I'd taken the camera. I was you. It was before video assist, and I was r really good uh, at hand holding and at m macro uh, lenses, and and so you know I couldn't trust. Uh, well, I wouldn't trust because I if I'd lost that shot and I'd lost the makeup, I wouldn't get the you know the blood sucking uh, fingers shot, and and so 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 I was ro rolling the camera to get the shot. And, and, and someone told me that Marilyn finally said, um, I just kept rolling, you know, the, the tube wasn't working. And, and, and someone, I don't know, less than 10 years ago in a, a screening said that, uh, that uh, she claims that she told him to go ahead and cut her. And I, and I, and, um, and I said, I, that, that can't be, that, that, that can't be. And then, and then I heard again at another screening that yes, that was true, that she had said that, and uh, and I think uh, uh, Leatherface himself said that. That's Gunner, what Gunner corroborated that. And and, and 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 now when I watch it, um, um, I I see that it does look like it because it isn't like it's dragged across and leaving blood behind, but it see it seems like you can see it bubble up. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of the finger, and uh, and so I don't know. That's a that's that's an awesome trooper story, and I'm <laughs> gotta tell you, I'm had I, happy as hell. I didn't suggest it because I would never do that. Uh, uh, but you know, <laughs> hey, we're gonna open it up um, for questions. Right here. Hi, Big, uh, just saw your film for the first time last year, and what really impressed me was I was watching it in, uh, in Wisconsin during a, uh, with a whole bunch of horror, other horror films in a horror film class, and I had always avoided the film because I thought its reputation, it's a really, really brutal film, it's a slasher film, but what I saw, yes, it's a horror film, but it's got such a beauty about it, and I was really kind of interested in... Um, both, yes, you're making this horrorish soundscape with the sound and with this imagery, but everything is laid out in a way that constantly has it be in a strange, twisted way beautiful. So I was kind of interested in what your thoughts as a director were to make this not go too far into the horror aspect and always be in a strange, aesthetically pleasing way, just off kilter. Well, well, well. You know, one thing, had, had I got an X rating, then I would have nothing. And, and, and I, th I think the second thing you're feeling is um, the, the amount of, of, of work that went into the, uh, 
the interaction with the film, like, uh, you know, with caring about the characters and what happened to them, because they, they, they were almost like documentary, like, oh, you know, almost like, uh, like uh, uh, a reality show, uh, uh, only better. I mean, it's, uh, um, there, were, there were, we didn't have reality shows back then. We did have cinema verite, but, but uh, actually the only cinema verite there ever was was Alan Funt's Cat in Camp. But, um, but, but anyway, um, sorry about bifurcating here. Um, but but you, were, you were dealing with, um, you were perceiving a story being told to you um, on, on, uh, on pla different planes of narrative, like the, the sound, you know, was its own character. Uh, the, the image and, and, the, and the quality of by that time, after 60 documentaries and a uh, film called Eggshells and a short c called The Heisters, and, and um, I, I developed a film style. And, and, and I was, I'd done all the jobs myself in, you know, to, to get to that point. I mean, being a cameraman, uh, being a makeup artist, being a, an actor, being a, and, and so, a, a for instance, um, it, it nowhere in the film ever does it say this film has anything to do with cannibalism. Uh, but 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 you're putting together these things uh, by inference, and and and, uh, and so you're in, you you're you're involved. You're thinking and you're interacting. I, I mean, all, you know, almost like as much attention is given to video games now. I mean, you know, I wanted. I wanted you to, to to leave your body and 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 go into this world of thought and processing, and and, and I think it's one of the, the the biggest reasons the film is held up the way it does is uh, is is you, you're twigging the all these narratives put together is 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 probably the larger part of telling this story, so I mean it must be cannibalism. And, and, and the only giveaway there is, is when Marilyn um, is in the gas station at night and Jim Cito goes out to get the truck, uh, saying, I'll take you to a, the, the, the telephone and either Newt or Childress, I, I've forgotten. And, that, uh, and, and she's s sitting there trying to compose herself and she sees barbecue sizzling and crackling as he's out getting the truck. And, um, and so it, it, you know, I think at that moment, you, you, you know, you're twigging that it's uh, probably cannibalism. Um, and I guess it was, you know, and uh, well, uh, I don't know, did I answer any questions? I, I, I gave you a lot of stuff. To, I'm just thankful for any answer. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Right here. <laughs> hello, hello, Mr. Hooper. How um, are you? I'm a screenwriter, and uh, I loved hearing what, like, what you shared about the backstories of the characters, like things that aren't really shown on the screen, um, because it really shows the thought that went into developing those characters. And I just had a question for you as far as like, what do you feel are really important elements when, when putting together a, uh, a story or even just what elements you feel are really important for like a horror story or genre? Well, well, well it's, it's the thing that's mi missing from most horror stories is, is just that, is, is a, uh, uh, bringing your characters that are coming from some place. They're not just appearing a as you're seeing them. So, so they're so they're carrying their baggage with them, and and then the and and, and then you, you can make a choice, you, you know, about it, with their characters and what baggage they have that bring the right uh, frequencies and the right harmony, and 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 that you know that can become a part of what you're doing, and and and, and I, you know I think most. Well, an example is, uh, too, I think a very good example is Robert Weiss, uh, The Haunting. I mean, all of those characters, 
you know, have something, something going on in their lives that uh, is, is, is a conflict. 